Okay, now that we've created our model, we're going to go ahead and create our extractions. Now, our standard working procedure for creating extractions is to create a container file separate from our model files and do all extractions within that container. This changes sometimes by project, but this is the standard workflow. So when we started out setting up our ecosim, we turned on this drawing extraction manager extraction manager toolbox. And we are going to make use of that in this container file that we created. Went ahead and named it this 36EC 3D Anno 1 and project wise. Since the skill is not part of this tutorial, I'll go ahead and leave that to uh, your additional training. If you have any questions, talk to your trainer. So when we open up this extraction manager toolbox, it comes up blank. We have a couple of tools creating drawing definitions, some that are grayed out. It's a check drawing output against drawing definitions, import drawing definitions referenced drawings, logging, drawing settings, a couple more that are grayed out, but those become active once we actually have an extraction set. We have move your selection, create a save view, calculate all, update, open, and view. I'm going to start by creating a drawing definition. Now, if you're working in our project-wise environments, you'll likely see this general drawing definition template show up. I'm going to go ahead and ignore that for now. There are certain settings that creates, or that, that toggles, that we will go over. But it's important that you know what those settings are. So if you have to change something, you can do so. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start with a name. It should be according to your project or company standards. In this case, I'm going to create a floor plan. Again, use your standard naming conventions. The only exception to what we would normally do, you are do not add dot .dgn to the end of this. If you do, it adds this funky dash dgn and then a dot dgn within project wise it just makes the naming funky so at this point it's just the root file name this description does not propagate into project wise it is str strictly for your own edification so we'll call this equipment master next drawing output directory this container was created within the model file for this project. So right now it exists here. We need to change that per our standards. All 2D master files need to be housed here. But again, follow your company or project standards. So we're going to create it under that master folder. We're going to set our region. To do this, we need to get into our preferred view arrangement. So in this case, it's one, two, three, four that I prefer to use. The easiest way to create your region is to stick with this two points and direction. You would then click define, select two points. Notice this kind of locks into axis. And then a third click creates the view. Now this is dictated by our checkboxes down here. It's a reflective sensitive distance, a forward sensitive distance, a forward view distance, and if you use it, a reflected view distance. This is great if you're using doing reflected ceiling plans. Now, we really don't need this thing to look all the way 600 feet down. Let's go ahead and change that. Now keep in mind, do not hit enter at this point or it already it goes in and saves and it may save some settings you do not want to save. 
So into your distance and hit tab. Uh, 50 feet still pretty far. So let's go 40 feet. That's still pretty far. So instead of sitting here and guessing our distance, we're going to click this move section. We're going to click our view distance line. Well, I tentative at this point because that makes sure I am locked into that view distance line and it allows us to manually move our view distance. This is great if you're trying to hit a junction between a floor for say you have an upper plan and a lower plan. You can adjust this accordingly so you're only seeing the exact view distance you want. In this case it's about 16 feet. I'm gonna go ahead and make that a nice round number and like I told you not to do, I hit enter, so it saved it. I'm going to go in and we're going to use the edit drawing definition at this point. So we're in region, we've created our two points and direction, we have it all set. Shapes. Shapes are awesome if you are trying to create an enlarged view or a very specific region that you want to cut. To do this, we're going to create a block. This can be on any level. It's going to disappear when we're done. So in this case, we'll just let it sit at default. Now let's say we don't want to see this duct bank in this floor plan. We're going to create a separate floor plan. Another thing you'll notice is our view. We can't see the block we're creating. So let's go ahead and hit escape. And when we set up, we wanted to turn this off. Why is it? That's interesting. Not sure why we were not seeing that. That was weird. So normally when that's happening, it's those view attribute toggles that have kicked on. So a weird behavior which isn't that abnormal. So we're going to create our 2D profile. We're going to now move this up in the 3D space because it exists down at zero zero or wherever it wants. And let's say that's we know that's where we want the top of our view distance to exist. So we're going to click shape define and since we already had the shape selected it went ahead and created our path and deleted the part with that in the process so what we can do now if we undo this a little bit show that define select your shape and that shape is all the way down at the bottom because I've hit undo too many times but that's easy because we can move. Select your path. This time we're going to select these white lines and that's going to allow us to move our drawing definition. I have tip, I do not use the distance or orientation. If you're creating isometrics, it's a lot easier if you do that as a saved view because you can sit there and tweak everything to where it looks right in your view space and then use that saved view to create your region. Next, participants. Since we are using a container file and not doing our extractions in the initial model file, we have to use this process a reference group model. So since this is the first one we're gonna create, we're gonna create new, we'll call this equipment. Again, this doesn't show up anywhere else. It's for your edification. So let's say you've attached a whole bunch of files and you need to split it up into say only your stuff and then everybody else. If you're creating extractions with the other disciplines turned on, you can create those. As, I would suggest creating those as separate group models so you don't have to worry about turning references off and on as you're running extractions. So we'll create an equipment group model. Now, when we click open here, the first time you create it, it's going to go ahead and copy in all of the 
references you have in the default model and then reference itself. So it is referenced the container model, default space, and then the references you already had attached. Well, we don't want it to process the container model, so we're going to remove that. You can remove any extractions from here as long as you are in the group model. They will stay referenced to the container, just not this group model space. So we know we want to process that model. So let's go ahead and zoom using double clicking on the middle or the mouse wheel gets us the fit view. And then let's go ahead and change something. So zoom. we don't really need to see these no plot lines. So we're going to select V1, go into our level display, select our reference, and we're going to turn off our no plot layer. We don't want to see that. So when we get into our cut plane views and everything, it says master file and reference will use settings for view one. Now let's say you're using the same group model for different things, you want to turn levels off and on. You can do that in your individual views and then just tell it which view to use for levels. Now when we get into some of our compound models and placing those and using those in extraction, some require to use this process constructions. If we, um, if you're extracting and it doesn't look quite right, try checking that on. And then these are structural op options we can ignore in the electrical. Same thing with forward and reflective part mapping. Cut plane view and forward view we're going to set up very similarly. We're going to select color, style, and weight. We're going to set these all to by level. We're going to turn off perform unification because we want to see individual elements. Since our switchboards are back to back, if we left that checked, you would only see one combined switchboard. We're going to use compound cell plan symbols. We don't have anything for this yet, but we will do so in the next extraction. We're going to cut off, turn off cut patterns and we're going to turn off unify and cut breaks. We go into forward view. Yes, we want to process a forward view. Set our color style and weight to by level. Turn off perform unification and we're going to leave the cell plan. Now, hidden views work okay. Um, I typically don't use them. But if you were to do so uh, in the forward view, typically we would set this to, say, the default hidden level. Let's say hidden by. We set these to by level as well. In the hidden, we're going to uncheck perform unification. We do not have a reflected view. If you did, you would set it up similarly. Again, making sure you're using color, style, and weight by level. And output, we use transpose xy. We are going to sync the perspectives to the cut plane, and we are going to output to a single model. If at this point it says it cannot save because it can't find your template or your seed file, this is where you would need to find that seed file and locate it. In most cases, if you're working in our standard project-wise deployment, this is where you're going to find it. Standards, resource, seed, and then your 3D seed. It uses the 3D seed to create a 2D extraction. Preferences. With electrical, we can typically leave these as medium. We don't have any really high detail things that we have to show. If you're doing some of the substation modeling or cable tray, you may need to put this to high, but typically we don't need to go past high for your view accuracy. And we can ignore these last three in electrical. Architectural, HVAC, structural rules, if you need training on those, check with your trainers on those. 
let's go ahead and save it. So as you have this selected, it's showing you where you're going to cut. We will go ahead and select Calculate All. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And there we go. Now for some reason, this is still coming up back to inbounds. All right. So in our next video, we will figure out why this is doing that.